Until the middle of the 20th century, the Earth was considered as the most precise clock, and the second was defined in relation to the duration of the mean solar day. In the 1960s came the atomic clocks and the new definition of the second as the duration of a number of transitions in the atom of cesium, what we call the SI second, SI standing for Système International. We knew at that time that the rotation of the Earth was irregular, so we chose the second as a mean value during the first half of the 20th century. It just happened that from the introduction of the SI second, the Earth rotation started to slow down probably more than it was anticipated, implying that time measured with atomic clocks, what we call UTC, starting to drift away from mean solar time. In the 1970s, the mean solid day was about one millisecond longer than the UTC-D. And it's a, it's a very short time, but after a year, the difference is about one second. So in 1972, it was decided to implement a procedure to adjust UTC with mean solid time. So any time, the difference between UTC and UT1, or the mean solid time, was about to approach 0.9 second there would be either the insertion or the deletion of a second. It is what we call the leap second. The last adjustment was in June 2012. And as of today, the difference between UTC and UT1 is 0.6 second. And it was decided to make a further adjustment this year. So the last day of June will be one second longer than usual. And the leap second will be inserted at midnight UTC. As our conception of time is concerned, this will not affect us. Adding a leap second in a way similar to the extra hour for daylight saving. Except that you can sense the difference between the 24 hours day and the next 23 and 25 hours day. But when you add a leap second, you won't feel any difference between a day lasting 86,400 seconds and the next one lasting 86,401 seconds. However, the matter is different for digital systems. As you know, all these systems are highly dependent on very precise time synchronization based on UTC. So anytime there is a leap second, you have to make sure that this is inserted correctly and accepted worldwide. As leap seconds are only announced a few months in advance, this cannot be done automatically. You need manual intervention and verification to make sure things are done properly. And there won't be any mishaps in the process. There were problems in 2012 with internet sites and aircraft booking, just to name a few. But I'm sure people will be more cautious this year when we will have the next leap second. As I told you, UTC time as we know it today is quite a recent invention, dating from the middle of the 20th century. And as the second is constant, it is not linked anymore to the Earth's rotation. In fact, before 1967, we adjusted our clocks with solar time. And now what we need to do is actually the opposite, just adjust the Earth's rotation with UTC. Well, unfortunately, there is no way to make the Earth rotate quicker or slower. So we decided to maintain an artificial link to the Earth's rotation through the implementation of the leap second. So if we stop inserting leap seconds, then we will break this link between UTC and UT1, and they will start to diverge from each other. So there were 25 leap seconds inserted in 40 years, so we can expect that divergence to be at least one minute per century, and that is causing some concerns for some administrations. Another concern is for systems that require UTC close to UT1, such as astronomical observatories or celestial navigation, and obviously these systems will need to be updated to adapt to the new time and be able to recover mean solar time or UT1. And finally, another group of administrations is of the opinion that stopping the insertion of the leap second will be beneficial for the digital world where we live. 
you have to realize that there were problems with almost every leap second in the last 40 years, also not as important and publicized as in 2012. Stopping the insertion of the leap second will mean saving time and money on the software update and also removing the risks associated with inserting the leap second. Oh yes, it will. In, in 2012, when it was proposed to modify UTC by removing the leap second, Many administrations were of the opinion they needed more time to understand the implications and take a decision. So it was agreed to make it an agenda item for the World Radio Communication Conference that will be held in Geneva in November 2015. This is agenda item 1.14 on the feasibility to achieve a continuous time scale. And there are currently four proposed methods to achieve this agenda. The first one is stopping the insertion of the leap second into UTC. The second one is broadcast UTC as it stands today, along with another continuous time scale based on the atomic time. The third option is to keep UTC as we know it, but at the same time broadcast the difference with atomic time. So we would be able to, we would be able to reconstruct the continuous time. And the fourth option that just came quite lately during the conference preparatory meeting is just to do nothing. Uh, so it will give administration time to consider the implication of a continuous time scale. So as you can see, there, are quite, there is quite a wide range of options. So I expect that there will be vivid discussions at WRC 15. I would like to emphasize uh, finally that uh, it is very important that we do take a decision on this issue in November 2015. We have been working on this, uh, on this topic for many, many years and now it's time that we really take a decision and so we can go along with UTC, a new UTC, whatever it is, but uh, a final UTC at the end of WRC 15.